What's going on guys? Bob Busker here at Think Computers and I'm going to be showing you the BIOS here on the EVGA Z270 classified K motherboard. Now this BIOS is pretty much the same throughout EVGA's Z270 line and I believe it's pretty much the same as the X99 motherboards as well. So hopefully this video will kind of show you around the BIOS and if you're having any issues it might help uh, you know help you through that so when you get into the BIOS you you're brought to the overclock tab um, but before we go into the overclock tab we'll go over kind of what's going on up here so first um, it shows us our CPU multiplier and BCLK frequency up top so if you're doing anything um, you can check what your system is running at and you can see our CPU clock 4.2 gigahertz um, over here, this means that hyper-threading is enabled, and uh, I'm not sure what the 4 means. I think that means, actually, I don't know what that means. Um, I think that means that all four cores are enabled, actually. Um, so we have that up here. Over here, we have our memory information. So we can see we have two 8-gig DIMMs here, and they're running at 16 gigabytes, uh, 2133 megahertz. Our voltages for both CPU and memory, and on this side, you can see our PCI Express slots. So we have a one graphics card installed running at X16 speed, uh, PCI Express 3.0. So you can kind of kind of see that. So if you're having any issues, you it's easy to just go ahead and uh, see what's going on. Maybe one card's not being recognized or something. You can see that immediately. And then we have our VRM temperature and our CPU temperature. And uh, we'll go into the overclock. Um, be actually, one more thing before we go into the overclock. Over here will be all of your information on the different settings. So if I select something, you can see how that changes over here. So we'll let you know what's going on. And it has your keyboard shortcuts here to do whatever. And then F12, or I believe you might just be able to click this, but F12 will take a screenshot as well. So you can go ahead and do all that. So in the main screen here, we can see our target CPU frequency. So if we're doing any overclocking, we can go ahead and uh, change that. And then multiplier control, I have everything on auto, um, you know, but you can change it to manual. And then when you go into manual, you'll be able to set all of your ratio limits and your multipliers and everything like that um, if you want. And then um, just in overclock, we have your BCLK and then our voltages for basically all your CPU voltages. So your V-Core, um, all this stuff that you can go ahead and change. Again, I have everything on auto, but you can set it up. So especially if you're doing overclocking, you can change all of your voltages. Now, if we go into memory, our memory does not have XMP profiles. It's just stock DDR4. Um, but you would have your memory information here on your XMP profile and then you would be able to select which profile you want on the memory. Um, and then we can see our timing configurations here. So our basic timings and secondary timings and third timings and all that kind of stuff. So you can see all of your timings here and um, you'd be able to change everything around. So if I went to manual, I can go ahead and of course change all of these if I wanted to. Um, you know, if I was overclocking my memory or wanted to change my timings, I could go ahead and do that. In advance, this is pretty much all of your other configurations. So anything to do with the CPU graphics, PCI Express, PCH, SATA, USB, all that stuff is here. I'm not gonna go into every one because these are pretty much the same, but in CPU configuration, this is where you're gonna turn off speed step in turbo mode. Um, also C states as well. So if you're doing any hardcore overclocking, you wanna turn your C states um, and your speed step off. Um, you know, and you can do all that uh, there. Go to CPU information, and we can see everything going on with our CPU. Uh, of course, we're running our Core i7 7700K, um, so you have all of the, our information on that. And uh, if we go out of that under graphics, um, you know, you can just see our primary display. This is where you can turn on your internal graphics. So if you're not running a discrete graphics card, you can turn that on. It's on. It's on auto. So if you don't have a graphics card installed, it should automatically pick up there. PCI Express um, just lets us know, you know, all of our uh, information. So we have our, uh, in slot two, we have a PCI Express uh, X16 Gen 3 card, and you can set it to Gen 2, Gen 3. You can do that on, on every one of the slots. PCH, um, not much here, just lets us know our PCH information. SATA, um, just let's again our SATA information and we can um, set you know our SATA hot plugs and all that kind of stuff um, ACHI we have enabled as always USB 
Uh, it just lets us know our USB configuration if you have legacy USB supports and you can enable and disable all of the ports which is kind of nice. And power management, um, you can turn on dark mode which I believe turns all of the LEDs on the board off. Um, so this board does have a bunch of LEDs, it has your audio uh, separation, it also has a debug LED, you can turn that on and off if you want, if you want, you know, as they say, dark mode. You can do that, and um, our hard hardware monitor, we can go into there, and um, you can see all of our temperatures, and you can um, see your fan settings. So we can go into fan settings, and we can, you know, our default fan speed is 30%, we can pump that up, we can pump that down, um, you know, we can do all that kind of stuff with their different fans. So if you want to set up your fans, you can go ahead and do that in here. And we can see our voltages as well. So you want to make sure everything is running correctly. You can go ahead and do that. And then NV NVMe information. If we did have an NVMe drive, this would have all of our information. And then finally, uh, we'll go into boot. And this is all of your boot options and everything like that. Um, you know, you can set everything up and all, all of that. It's real simple. Um, and you can turn certain things off, like you can turn fast boot on and off, quiet boot, speaker beep, all that kind of stuff. Um, so when this, by default, when this motherboard turns on, it makes a little beep. Um, so if you don't want that, obviously you can turn that off. Pretty easy to do. And then finally, we have save and exit. And a couple things that I like to see here, um, load last save settings, uh, which is nice. Uh, so if you, you know, mess something up you can load your last save settings so you can just go back to what you did instead of clearing the cmos and then go back going back and doing everything um the only thing that i don't like here is there's like no optimized defaults you can restore defaults i guess these are optimized i'm not exactly i guess yeah f5 is optimized default so they do have that in there um boot override is something i also like to see so if i'm installing windows um or another operating system i can select my usb drive and then when it boots the second time, when it restarts, I don't have to go back in and change my boot priority. I can just, you know, it will be set already. So that's kind of nice to have. You can load and uh, save profiles and all of that. And you can update your BIOS very easily from uh, right in here. So it's pretty easy. This BIOS is pretty simple. It's not as in depth as other BIOSes on other motherboards, but it does get the job done and it's snappy. It's not laggy like we've seen from some other Z270 boards. Um, it just gets the job done and it's it's not super fancy. It is just, you know, just a BIOS that gets the job done, has everything that you would want for overclocking and changing settings and all of that. Um, so if you have any questions about this BIOS, again, we're running this on the EVGA Z270 Classified K. So if you have any questions, leave them in the comments section below. Till next time, catch you guys later.